Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the La Liga Liga Prim, uh, Premier Liga <laughs> Liga Nosh review. I wanted to do this yesterday at night, did not really happen, so I'm doing this very early in the morning. Um, which has the added advantage that I can get in some Portuguese uh, the evening game from Portugal, still one missing bearing Real Madrid I had a really hard time choosing this time it's it's again Real Madrid and yeah this beautiful away jersey although they wore white but I've only one white and that's hanging up there uh, in the ranks so what are the headlines well we definitely have now a duel for the title a Madrid duel for the title uh, we have another rather uh, Barcelona performance also Real Sociedad not working all that that well and I also want to point out that Celta Vigo is on a winning streak and the last thing we had a Sevilla Valladolid matchup where the best scenes were probably the goals that were not scored although there was a really nice goal scored and yeah if you haven't seen it I will not talk about it because we, I'm not talking about the Segunda but um, just check the goal of Raul de Tomas for Espanyol from the halfway line after he sombrerot another player. A oh, really, really, really great goal. In France, tackle of the year in all of Europe uh, for PSG in a drab nil nil draw and Lyon going back into second place. In Portugal, same old, same old, the top three are on top. So let's, uh, I, you know, I will not spend much time in Portugal because I didn't see much of those guys. I actually saw quite some La Liga action, but also more highlights. It was not, there was not the dedicated game that I was watching, let's put it that way. Um, and for France, uh, similarly, but you know, I am caught up. So we'll start uh, with Atletico Madrid against Elche, where Luis Suarez scores two goals. I had this on. So um, putting them onto uh, a winning path, it was not like the super atleti that is, you know, that we saw before the Madrid derby. This uh, reminded more of the Atletico Madrid of the Champions League in a way, but they were scoring goals at least. Luis Suarez uh, twice, um, uh, Elche pulls one back, but then Diego Costa converts a penalty. He's back, so uh, watch out. And I think. Atletico Madrid is not really officially talking yet uh, championship, but I think they want to uh, make a challenge towards the top. Uh, then Barcelona Valencia, that was definitely my game that I wanted to watch most. Mostly, I spent uh, a good a bit of attention there, but I have to say Barcelona, no, this did not look good. They had a great first half against Real Sociedad and now against Valencia. Yes, they controlled, but uh, the only team that was dangerous was Valencia, at least in the first half. And uh, the AKB goal in the 29th after a corner from Soler. I mean, how they let this huge guy alone in the box is... Uh, I don't understand. I mean, this is a goal that should never have happened. And then you have, uh, it's even worse, you have Griezmann marking this guy. Yes, maybe Griezmann can jump a high, but uh, this does not seem right. Uh, this is not a good uh, tactic to have um, Griezmann. You have other, I think they have actually, among the young defenders, they have actually quite some tall dudes in there. So I really don't get why they need to have Griezmann marking the AKB. Um, Barcelona had only, and, and it is weird, only the occasional counter attack working for them. But um, then from one of those, uh, Griezmann is brought down in the box. Rather weird. Um, I'm not sure how much of a foul it was. Guy is initially sent off for it, and they look at it on VAR. Um, it's uh, given as a, ye a yellow card because there was seemingly some, some touch, but it was not a push. Some stuff like that uh, was still, I thought it was a doubtful penalty. And I tell everyone, Messi is about to score, Messi is about to score, because my uh, older daughter, uh, she likes, for some reason, she, she knows Messi and she likes Messi when she is getting a little bit into uh, watching soccer with me. So yeah, having the shirt of Milan already. So yeah, uh, she wanted to see that and I said, I think Messi is going to miss. And yes, he missed. No, he, he didn't miss. It was saved, but then... Um, uh, Jordi Alba gets the ball, gets the flag, and Messi can head it in right thereafter. So Soda on the rebound, and he breaks another record of single goals for one club. That record is one of those that I don't count much because he probably has played a lot more games than, for instance, Pele. So 1-1. One, one. 
And after the half, Araujo, Araujo, I think Araujo, uh, scores a wonderful goal. I mean, there was uh, no one wants to take a ball falls to him, and he scissor kicks it into net to Van Barca, the uh, one of the uh, young defenders. And at that moment, I thought, yeah, maybe Barca has has his bag. No, Maxi Gomez after I really played. I think um, uh, it was um, um, yeah. Not Carlos, so, uh, so Gedesh, who played a wonderful pass uh, in it is the cutback and to Maxi Gomez, who, who, who can only build in the net. And it's 2 2, and I probably deserved so. The one thing that I was really worried, uh, you know, going cra cra crazy about is uh, I was thinking, why is Valencia playing in all white? Why can't we have them play in their traditional uh, white with black pants? That should work just fine until I realized they're playing all in their third kit, which is even worse. I think Barcelona against Valencia can be played in proper kits. So let's finish that episode. Uh, I actually then had also side screen Levante against Rasos that I did not decide on Villarreal or Sassuna, who actually got a 3 1 win. And Villarreal seems to be now the team that could challenge for a Champions League spot. Let's see. Because uh, Real Sociedad has a huge problem uh, converting. And yes, Oyar Sabal. Uh, is not playing so they uh, and, and and there is no David Silva, so I think that that is impacting Real Sociedad a lot. Isa gets in the win, but Roger uh, gets um, the equalizer shortly thereafter, and then it was a really um, honestly, I have to say, it was then really more going. In, although Real Sociedad has possession, but it's kind of empty possession, a little bit like Barca and Juan de Frutos. Uh, gets in the 87th the winner for uh, Levante probably was deserved although I was really hoping that um, Real Sociedad will get that win. I saw that the highlights of Sevilla against Real Valladolid and that is really twice the post uh, or the woodwork was hit. The first one wonderful pass from Rakitic it was from a, a, um, a kick goalkeeper kick uh, Rakitic controls it and plays it in one smooth motion into Ocampos' uh, path, runs onto goal and tries to lob it right from the um, penalty box onto the bar and they can here find it. They, Sevilla then gets an equalizer. Uh, no, a nod, nod, and it gives a penalty. I'm getting too excited about those uh, <laughs> woodwork. Uh, um. Uh, actions gets a penalty that Ocampos converts. Um, Sevilla probably starting out well was the was the better in the first and the second half. Via the lead really came and really was pushing and uh, late on they also hit the uh, the post with a back heel kick. Uh, really in the uh, style of Magia in the eighty seventh uh, European Cup final. Uh, look it up if you don't see it. Probably one of the uh, one of the best goals ever scored in a European Cup final. Maybe not quite up there with uh, Zidane and Bale. And then uh, Raul, Gar was it Raul Garcia, wonderful goal. I mean, the way he takes the uh, ball from the edge of the box, volleys it right into the corner. Fully deserved the driver to lead, also starting to look better. better. Speaking of stars, I look back at Celta Vigo, gets a fourth win in a row. That coaching change worked. I remember they had the coaching change, then scored two at Sevilla in a 4 2 loss, where they actually probably would have deserved more. Uh, and then, since then, they're rolling, and as we'll see, this really put them high up the table. And I'm very happy because you know I have some sympathies for Celta. Mendez scores the first goal, and Barry Aspa, <laughs> Barry, yeah, I'm a TSFP li listener, they call Iago Aspas Barry, Lord Barry As von Aspas, <laughs> of Aspas. <laughs> Uh, so I've, I always have to chuckle at that. Um, uh, he assists Mendez to make it 2-0, uh, very deservedly so. Uh, Granada win a Andalusian derby against Arbetis, Cadiz losing at home to Getafe, and then Real Madrid having great first 20-25 minutes where Modric and Benzema not only score the goals but are really running the show uh, together with Kroos. It was very, very uh, impressive, the stuff that Real Madrid played. And that they were only up 2-0 was probably a little bit too little. But then a great goal by Kike puts Eibar back in, in, into the match. It became a great game that Real Madrid only could decide very, very, very late. So yeah, Real Madrid keep winning it. I think, as we will see, Atleti is still uh, up top and probably has a strong ad advantage. But at the moment, 
And given that they, a month ago Real Madrid were in a big crisis, Real Madrid at the moment looks, looks like the best team in Spain. So let's look at the standings. And super uneven. I mean, we have 14 rounds played, but Real Sociedad has already 15 games because we had the round 19 uh, pulled four forward with two games uh, in the midweek. So super uneven, but we have Atletico and Real Madrid level on points now. Real Sociedad with three behind. Villarreal is India, Barcelona, also a few games less. You know where I'm going at. We are going to adjust this table because uh, then we get a much, much, much clearer picture. And yes, Atleti is still in a solid lead. Now with Barcelona again dropping points, it seems to be a two horse race. It's the two Madrid teams. And at the moment, due to the two games in hand, Atletico is given still the advantage. Although, to be honest, um, on current form, and we have no guarantee that this is preserved, so that's why I, I actually like it this way. Uh, it's presented here. I would give it to Real Madrid, but I, I can see why Atletico Madrid are still the favorites uh, with a potential six points advantage. But this might change quickly uh, if there are a few draws in there. We also see that Villarreal is currently in a strong third position, but Real Sevilla and then also Barcelona, Granada, kind of um, all in there. Barcelona is kind of the sleeper team in this because they are just not good and they might have a hard time making it in, in the top four, but given uh, the squad and the quality they have, they should easily uh, make it in, in, into the top four. On the bottom, it's still Elche, who will sit here mid-table because they have a few games in hand that are the favorites to go down. I also, I don't see it necessarily this way. Uesca is, is much tougher. Osasuna, who is also bottom of the table, but again, game less. Um, we have to see. I actually think that Real Valladolid has have a good run. They could get out of there. So it is still not quite clear. Valencia sitting dangerously low there. Uh, although they perform well against the big big teams, but where they have to win, they usually do not win. And we also have to talk about Celta. Eighth spot, they are shooting up. I mean, they were bottom of the table about a month ago. We have a round that starts today where I am shooting this um, with actually quite some interim. Valencia, Sevilla, sounds tasty. Um, also, Real Sociedad against Atletico Madrid. I think I will be watching La Liga uh, Tuesday night, and Real Madrid Barcelona is a little bit late for my li liking. Um, the Wednesday matchups are actually all not that great. I think there's really a lot of good stuff uh, happening on Tuesday. So yeah, uh, looking forward to those games. Let's go a little bit further east to France. Um, uh, Marseille dropping points against Stade de Reims. Yes, I cursed them. Two weeks ago I said they are the sleeper team here and now since then they're not picking up wins. At least they get a draw down, down there. We have uh, Lyon. Uh, really had not much trouble against Nice, but they scored some uh, pretty uh, remarkable goals. Not so much the one by Depay, which was an unnecessary penalty. penalty. You know, Panenka, a little bit like Zidane in 2006 World Cup final, but less... How do I say? It fit better. It went no, it did not go on, on the bar, but I'm a little bit tired of all those Panenka kicks. Although this one was a very, very well executed one, so yeah. But... Uh, they're getting a little bit too uh, common uh, for me, for my my taste. Yeah, old, old style soccer fan. Meanwhile, so the Pai Kaka de Vere uh, put the advantage of Lyon into goals. Uh, Guiri can uh, pull one back before for the half, but then a wonderful uh, Karl Kadeverre. Depay plays the ball uh, to Kadeverre, who then uh, goalkeeper comes out to him, passes to Toko Ekambi, who can put it into net really really nicely played and I think Lyon could be one of those true challengers to uh, PSG which means I should get a Lyon jersey for back there I'm also looking at Lille um, before we go to the big game we have Monaco winning 1-0 um, we had Bordeaux uh, pulling out a 2-0 win at Strasbourg and Rennes uh, wins the Breton derby against Lorient unfortunately Right after the game, I think some lights fell onto a worker there and he was sadly killed. So uh, rather sad scene there. Uh, rather sad overall the game between Lille and PSG. Uh, PSG without um, Neymar and Mbappé, which suddenly they pull in, put in a team performance. Uh, controlling a game, but not really having big chances as well. I mean, 
you could make one of or two of these uh, for, for for sure. Late on, Lil then had two chances and one where Fresnel Kimpembe pulls out the tackle. I mean, three arc, argue four, Lil strikers alone running and he comes in and takes uh, the ball from Jaziki uh, with a tackle where he pulls his hamstring, or he pulled his hamstring before. Uh, gets the ball and then even can kick kick the way to stall uh, to stall this uh, attack. This is a tackle. Frame it. This is absolutely amazing athletic feat. Unfortunately, he is out, and I think uh, there are more. Um, even Kusavar comes out uh, in injury. So the the interesting situation is PSG also looks kind of dire. Uh, if you look at the standings, I, I wouldn't say the standings are dire for PSG. Uh, they're still in third spot, but um, remarkably, they have not won against any of the uh, other top three here, uh, or top four here, at, um, and they had all of them at home ex ex except little. So um, that seems a little bit odd at the moment, but PSG is still I think is uh, and right right for so can consider the big favorites here. We have Marseille with two games less, so we will adjust uh, these standings as well. But it, this time it doesn't change anything. Uh, about a week ago they were still they, they were in first place. Now uh, with two draws in in a row, their record is not all all the great. I still think that PSG, as said here, is a strong contender. But Lille and uh, Lyon could probably do something in there. Depending, uh, do they have to sell players? Can they give, keep the squad, squad together? Because you know, the January is kind of the defiling of uh, good teams, but that need money. And Lille has a sticky ownership situation. Lyon, Depay could go for a little money. So uh, we have to say that. I am happy to see Rennes also back up again. Um, on the bottom, yeah, Nîmes, Lorient and Dijon seem to be the teams that are favored to go down. Uh, we have also a midweek round all on Wednesday. Um, what's the big matchups? I'm, I mean, there's a tradition between Lyon and Nantes. I see PSG plays against Strasbourg, Montpellier against Lille. I think that's a sleeper. Mazet Angers. I think there's not really, really the big matchup in there. And then we can go to Portugal, where, as I said, all the big teams win. We have Sporting with a 1 0 win, we have Benfica with a 2 0 win, we have Porto with a 2 0 win. Very impressive. Vitoria de Guimarães, 4 um, 0 win. I think they have scored only 7 before this, so now they are. Uh, are they at 11? Yes, they are at 11. They're not, it's not a free scoring league in Portugal, it's similar in Spain. We have Sporting, Benfica, Porto up on top, and here e Majestic uh, will only do the, the changes that Braga, who play uh, two and tonight, go ahead of Vitoria de Guimarães. Um, and we have, after Christmas, is the next round being played. So yeah, uh, Guimaraes against Porto, I think, is the one that I'm looking at here. Sporting plays Belenenses and Benfica against Portimonense. Yeah, I think the last one, that's the big one. So yeah, let me know what you thought about the games happening in the West of Europe uh, this weekend. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day.